Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers and this presentation is titled Difficult Passengers, I've Had a Few. Yes, I have. So I retired in 2015, so I missed all the COVID drama because I heard that was even more fun than some of the things I had. But I got a few, I got a few tales here you might find interesting. Now, as you all know, this is what coach flying looked like back in the 50s and 60s. You know, plenty of room stuff, not like uh, it is now. Um, but, uh, oh, by the way, uh, Cal and Burl, if you're watching, tell me the comment, friend of mine, that, uh, you know, my head's too small. I need to make my head bigger. He says, you're not ugly. You need to make your head bigger. So this is my bigger head, but uh, uh, we'll be uh, transitioning back on the next slide to your normally uh, sized head. And I was flying a trip out of uh, Washington National down to uh, Miami. And um, we're just about ready to close the door and all that. And the flight attendants come up and said, ah, we got a problem. And I go, oh, what is it? And she says, ah, the lady won't stow her bags uh, under her seat back here. They're in the aisle. So, okay. So the first thing you do, you put on your captain's hat so everybody knows that you're the captain because they figured if the captain's talking, you know, they have to pay attention. And usually, um, if there's any issue, that, that often solves the problems. A lot of people think they can push flight attendants around, but when the captain comes back, then they usually calm down. Well, guess what? I come back there and the flight attendants are around her and uh, she is just... Um, not being very friendly to him. And I said, uh, I understand, ma'am, we have a problem here. And she says, yes, they're telling me to stow my bags and they don't have the authority to do that. Well, I said, well, yes, ma'am, they do have the authority to tell you to stow your bags. They have to be stowed for safety. The aisle has to be clear. And I'm telling you, I'm the captain and I'm telling you uh, to stow your bags. And she looks at me and says, you don't have the authority to tell me to stow my bags. And I said, ma'am, you understand I'm the captain on this flight. And she looks at me blankly and I said, okay, we've got, we've got two possible solutions here. One, you stow your bags nicely so the aisle is clear and we get underway and everything's fine. Number two, I remove you from the aircraft for not complying with uh, orders from a, uh, a crew member, which is a federal offense. Can be if they prosecute, of course. So I go back to the cockpit and I tell my uh, second officer, I says, hey, get on the radio, tell ramp, tell we need uh, police out here. We need to remove a passenger. And uh, OK, well, they didn't come with dogs and guns. This is a European picture. But, uh, you know, police in Washington, D.C., decent presence. Uh, four officers come down and they just just come right on the aircraft and they go right back to where uh, she's setting. And of course, the flight attendants are back there to point her out. And um, she was going down to Miami and then continuing on to South America. So she had a connecting flight to make. And um, as uh, the police were coming back there, uh, they uh, the flight attendants told me later that they heard her say in Spanish, uh, oh my God, what have I done? Well, they pick her up and uh, it was a lady and three kids. They pick her up get their bags, and they come on off out of the aircraft. Uh, now, there's an interesting little uh, corollary to this story. Okay, they removed her. Well, there's this little hurricane coming towards Miami, and ours was one of the last flights that uh, got in before they shut down the airport, and uh, so she did not get on the flight. She missed her connection to Miami, and it was several days later that she was finally able to get on a flight out of National, and she flew with us again uh, down to Miami and make her connection down to South America. Now, the gate agent uh, that was working my flight when this occurred happened to be the same gate agent that uh, I met um, well, about five days later when I was coming through, and I said, um, remember that lady? Uh, that I had an issue with and the cops removed her and she looked at me for a second and then she started kind of uh, laughing and she said, yeah, the, uh, the police brought her out here and she starts um, uh, making comments about how the captain was terrible and stuff like that. And the police officer put up her hand and he says, you know, ma'am, if you'd have just kept quiet and stowed your bags, he'd have probably let you go. And uh, of course that was the truth. So uh, not a good move on her part. Now, I'm flying a trip out of Amsterdam to um, Dulles Airport there, Washington National. This is the international airport, and this is after 9-11. And there is a gentleman in business class. He, um, I actually see him get on board, and I say hello to him as he gets on board, uh, as, I, as I like to do, because I, I, I like to stand at the door and say hi to people once I get everything done. And uh, uh, 
I had uh, found out uh, from one of the ticket agents that there had been a problem with his passport and he was supposed to be on the flight the previous day and uh, was removed for some issues and he wasn't very happy about it. Well, he seemed all, you know, happy to me and all this stuff, but, you know... Um, most people are. So he goes, sets down there. Uh, we're flying across the Atlantic, coming back. I come off my break, and um, the uh, the senior flight attendant there uh, meets me, and she, and she is very upset. Now, this was one of our very senior flight attendants, and senior flight attendants usually can handle passengers. They, they've been doing it for decades, and they can usually handle passengers fairly well, difficult difficult ones. Well, she was shook. And I mean, I could see it in her face and her demeanor that, that she was, she was upset. So, um, I, uh, I told the, uh, the cockpit, I said, hand my hat back, you know, got to have the captain's hat. So I put my hat on, I went back there and what had happened was he had gotten upset about something and started cussing and swearing and using, uh, what you call inappropriate language to flight attendants or anybody else. And that in itself is not good. So I went back there and he starts, uh, he starts uh, laying into me about something. I put up my hand up and I said, sir, first of all, the fact that I'm back here is you're interfering with the duties of a crew member because I'm supposed to be in the cockpit right now, not coming back here to handle an issue. And I said, secondly, you swore at one of my flight attendants and, you know, I don't know what the problem was. It's not really significant, but you don't use that type of language to my flight attendants. Now, I said, I want you to be very nice very respectful and very quiet the rest of the flight, or I'll have authorities meet the aircraft when we get into Dulles. And I said in post 9-11 uh, flying, Dulles, Washington National, is not the place where you want to be met by the police. So uh, I go back into the cockpit, and uh, a little bit later, the flight attendant calls me up and says, I don't know what you said to him, but everything has been yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, and he has been the absolute perfect gentleman. Well, we get into Washington Dulles, and uh, he is one of the first people. He's he's in the business class seat right next to uh, the door to left, and he is off the aircraft like a shot. And, uh, of course, we're gathering up all our stuff, all the people getting off, saying bye to him. So we're the last people coming off. And as I'm going uh, by the uh, the area there, right off uh, the aircraft, uh, the security area, there are a couple of custom agents and him, uh, standing there, they have his bags open, and it's it's a couple of these big uh, four by ten foot tables, and all of his stuff is laid out all across these tables, and I had nothing to do with this. Uh, I don't know what his passport issue was, but I had nothing to do with this. But uh, he's looking at me, and he's he's just kind of laughing at this point and shaking his head, and I just kind of you know wave and smile back at him. It's like you did this, didn't you? And I go, no. Now, I, I didn't say I didn't do anything, but it's kind of like, you know, uh, don't give people problems or they might not treat you the best. So it probably had something to do with the issue he had in Amsterdam, but uh, they were going through his stuff with a fine tooth comb. Now, I flew Hawaii a lot, and that's a that's a fun time. People going and coming, they're they're all happy. So this wasn't really a problem with a passenger. I, I call it weather awareness. This guy is coming down the jetway. He's in a tank top, shorts, and flip-flops. Well, you know, you're in Hawaii, and, you know, people don't dress up in suits anymore in the airlines. You may have noticed that. But he's coming down the jetway, and he's in his tank top and shorts and, and flip-flops. That's great. But the actual temperature uh, that day back in Chicago was a minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, he would freeze his posterior off just walking up the jetway, even if he had some warm place to go. And it's like, you know, don't you check these things? You know, Hawaii's nice. It's beautiful. It's sunny. Chicago, this was a cold day in Chicago. And I'm talking a really cold day. You, you do not want to be dressed like that. So, I'm in Honolulu again, and we're getting ready to come back to Chicago, and the gate agent comes down to me and says, we've got a passenger, um, him and his wife, I'm not sure if we want to let them on uh, your aircraft. Um, he's uh, He appears now just to be hungover. He doesn't appear to be intoxicated, but uh, I guess he was really partying last night, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if he might uh, cause trouble. 
And I said, well, why do you say that? And he says, well, he's an actor and he plays people on TV that uh, are on the movies that um, are pretty much uh, tough type thug type people. And I'm a little worried about, <laughs> we're a little worried about him. Uh, and this guy does, I'm not going to tell you who he was, of course, but, uh, he, he plays the really tough guys, uh, prison fight scenes, things like that, you know? So, okay. I go out in the jetway and I go up to him and, uh, uh I sat down next to him and his wife and, uh, he, he was very nice and respectful. And I said, sir, you know, uh, the uh, gate agent is concerned about putting you on. And, uh, uh, I also had, uh, had talked to the, um, the, head flight attendant about it, obviously, because they're the ones who have to handle them. And we had flown together a lot and she knew me and she says, you know, you go talk to him, whatever you decide I'm fine with. So I went out there and I said, sir, the, uh, the gate agent is a little concerned about having you on the flight that you might be disruptive. And I said, I, I need to understand that, that you will be fine. And, uh, and not be disruptive, and uh, you'll be a, a perfect gentleman. And he looks at me uh, uh, next to his very beautiful wife uh, and says, oh, I, I will be fine. There will be there will be no problem. So, okay, come on on board. So brought him on board, and uh, he and his wife virtually uh, slept the entire uh, flight back to Chicago. And uh, when we got in, he smiled as he was getting off, and, and he was a very nice guy. Not Not the type of person that he portrayed in the movies, I'll tell you that. Now we had another incident. I am a 737 co-pilot, and uh, we had come off the gate, and we had taxied out, and the flight attendant calls us and says, uh, there's a man sleeping next to the window, his jacket's open, and I can see a gun. Oh, this is not nice. Um, so... Uh, we didn't have any paperwork of any armed person on board, so the captain arranges to pull off to the side. We stop, uh, and he says, go back there and talk to him. And I said, okay, uh, what do you want me to do? And he said, well, ask him if he's got paperwork for the gun, if he, if, if it's appropriate that he has one. And, he, and the captain says, and if I hear a shot, I'm going to go out the cockpit window. You're on your own. I go, okay, thanks a lot. So I go back there, and of course the guy's sleeping, and uh, I wake him up. And of course he's on the window seat, so I have to lean over two other passengers and say, uh, Sir, could I talk to you for just a minute? So I bring him up into the forward galley, and I said, uh, Sir, I noticed that you are armed. And he goes, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm an FBI agent. And I said, uh, Do you have paperwork for that? And he pulls it out and says, Oh yeah, I was supposed to give this to the captain. And I go, Yes, you were. It's very important that we know who is armed on board the aircraft. And he goes, oh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, and uh, he says, you know, it was funny. I thought when you came and got me that you had a, a problem on the aircraft and you, and you needed my intervention. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 you were the problem. So I take the paperwork up to the captain and uh, uh, he goes back and he sets down. Now, uh, there's a, uh, the rule that any armed passengers on the aircraft have to... Um, present themselves and their appropriate paperwork. There, there's a few exceptions, uh, so don't don't uh, make comments about that because there are a few exceptions. But um, they have to present their paperwork uh, to the captain, and the captain has to know what they look like. And I had a situation where I had a, a new agent who got on the airplane and uh, was back there, and the flight attendants uh, somehow realized he was armed but he had not uh, given me any appropriate paperwork. So I brought him up uh, to the cockpit and I said, you, uh, I understand your arm. Do you have paperwork? And he go, oh, yes, I do. Here it is. And I said, uh, he, he said he was new. And I said, okay, but you need to understand, I need to see your paperwork uh, because I need to know who's on board that's armed. And I said, I often have, my, my record is 18 um, Secret Service agents on board when we had a, a very high-ranking Chinese individual in Washington, D.C. That's my record, 18. Uh, we were taking them back home. But um, I said, I need to know who you are. And if we have other armed people on the aircraft, they need to know who you are, too. Because the last thing I want to do is a gun battle back there between people who uh, don't know that there's somebody else on the aircraft with a gun. So anyway, um, he took that to heart and went back. So those are my tales. I have a few others, uh, but those are probably the most interesting ones. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.